So I'm going to update the BIOS and just watch the video on how to do it. Hopefully I know what I'm doing. Okay, so we went on the MSI's website. We downloaded the file. We've got it downloaded. Uh, this came out in 2016. So we have a file here. Click show in folder. So it is right here. Open. Okay, and then we go to properties. Wait, wait, nope. Send to. I think that's what they were doing. Let me double check this. I don't want to be wrong. Okay. What were they doing? They went here. They so they downloaded the file. Um, okay, so they downloaded the file. They clicked on it, and they went to USB drive. Okay, I don't know. They're just their system looked different than mine. I don't know. Everything looks different on that computer. This is a video from 2022. I don't know what they were using, what version of what. So, we'll go back over here to our file. And then we'll send this to the other drive. I love how every time I put something on a drive, it names itself. Like, now it's called Ubuntu Stud. <laughs> okay. We'll come over here and eject it. Okay. According to them, we should be able to easily put this in the computer here. And, um... It should... This thing's funky. I hate plastic USB sticks, but anyway, all right, so we're doing this in attempts to get this updated and also maybe try and get the uh, M.2 drive to work. Okay, I'm going to reset and hit delete. Get in the bio setup. Coffee in the way. Okay, so apparently we just use M flash. Um, uh, okay. Is it really that quick? They they showed it doing something differently. Want to hear the hard drive or the CD drive doing something wacky? Um, this is not what they showed on there. Okay. Oh, okay. So, this is a little simpler than what they showed. They also weren't showing it for this exact same motherboard either. I always get nervous doing this kind of stuff because, uh, you know, I think if you screw it up, I don't know, if the BIOS chip is screwed up, I mean, like, I'm not sure if you can get the computer to do much of anything. So I've done this a couple of times, but I don't do it very often. Um, I always hate doing this on any kind of devices, like flashing new firmware to things and um, back in the day, I used to unlock Android phones and, uh, bricked a few of them and, you know, I'd always been able to recover, but I mean, it's always a possibility of not being able to 65%, 67%. There's not that much to write to that little BIOS chip. So I'm like wondering why it actually is so slow. Um, but anyway, what they showed in the video, we I didn't play the whole thing, but 
Let me show you a completely different format. Okay. So. Basically, though, I don't think this is probably going to make this actually work for the M.2, but we'll see. So. We're just doing this for the sake of the video. And I should be able to just remove my USB stick. I'll leave it plugged in just in case. So there we go. So it's going to tell me um, most likely uh, to select a bootable device. Or maybe not. What's it doing? I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> What the hell? Well, that's kind of weird. Okay, so... Um, I I don't think it ever completed my Windows installation. Um, so... I should probably have turned this into a two-part video. I didn't expect it to do this. So what's happening right now... Is that I had installed Windows... And... I need to plug my other stick back in. I had started to install Windows on this computer with the BIOS out of date. And um, I installed it on the M.2. And normally Windows will boot back in again one more time. And it will ask you, you know, set your keyboard and all that other stuff. And um, that never happened because the BIOS are too old to recognize the stick but the windows media installation can recognize the stick i don't know if we're going to run into an issue or not here or what it's going to do um it might actually just go back into the uh the boot for this or it might actually start to set up windows so it looks like it could be starting to set up windows or it might be running the installation Again, I don't know. Okay, so actually this looks like this probably solved our problem. Yes. Yes. Skip. And I do not want any of this stuff. And this is good because now I need to... Um, Re rename my computer and I'm going to rename it NVMe just because that will tell me what it is and I'm going to uncheck all of these not now by the way you want to do the installation without uh, internet connected or it will require you to create a, uh, uh, you'll have to use a Windows account. You'll need an email address or something like that. So I've learned to, to do it this way. I want as little involvement with affiliations and information being sent back and forth. So um, I guess that's probably about it for this video. Um, we'll uh, come back. I think when we have a successful reboot. All right, so we're we're apparently in Windows. Um, I'm gonna need to do a bunch of crap. So now is when I plug my Ethernet back in and let it do all kinds of crap because it's gonna have to download all kinds of drivers. Find my Ethernet plug port. I just I can't see what the hell's going on back here. There we go. Okay. I'll click get started on this, and immediately I will um, download Mozilla Firefox. Because I, I don't, I, I generally don't use this browser. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, and then this card is going to get tried out in a couple of different computers. 
but um, I'm really so tired of this co-pilot crap. So. Oh, God. Okay, Mozilla Firefox. The reason I like Firefox is I can block a lot of the stuff that uh, is in there. Like Google Chrome and all that, like really. Uh, what the heck? And normally I don't have to do all this crap. Okay. So, the computer should be good to go. Um, and updating the BIOS was pretty easy. And it looks like that solved the problems. What I was showing in the other video that somebody else was doing two years ago apparently is not necessary anymore. Another thing we need to do here is we need to check for updates because I'm sure there's a ton. I've done this so many times. And we'll deal with Firefox later. We need to get all these important updates. Download and install. Hardware requirements for Windows 11. I'm going to turn this on so this thing will do what it needs to do. Get 75% uh, on one. So I'll be back when it's done with this. Alright, so this is going to take a really long time, but we know this is going to work. If it doesn't, I'll make a video and say, hey, it didn't work. But uh, let's just assume it worked. So thank you guys for watching, and that's about it. In actuality, I think I'll hang out for a second here. Um, because this is going to want to reboot anyway before it does all of them. Alright, we got the restart. Uh, I don't know if it's... Um, okay. There we go. Start now. Let's see what it does. It's obviously going to be doing some updates. I have this thing running in the background. That's okay. So it's going to take a little bit of a minute for just to do its thing. But once this is done, we know that the, the drive is working. And I haven't seen anybody else really posting any issues on this motherboard. Because probably nobody's dumb enough to use it anymore. It's too old. Um, but anyway, I've got boards older than this that I'm still using. So, All right. So it works. We can see it's rebooting. It's not going to do it fast because you know we just installed the system. But yeah, pretty cool. I I almost actually uh, was just like ready to give up on this thing, but and I thought, well, I need to update the BIOS anyway, so let's go ahead and update those. And the next thing you know, it's installed Windows. So that's kind of fun. This is my first M.2. And I was really... I had to do a lot of research on it before I bought one because I, I really didn't know what the differences were. And I thought all M.2s were supposed to be the same. And I didn't realize that there's like um, a form factor versus like what actually it is. Because it, it could be... Um, an NVMe, or it could be just basically a regular SATA, an M.2 SATA. So, this thing's doing now, it's still... Okay, so it's doing updates. But anyway, so, I think even a SATA on that M.2 is still faster than a regular SATA, uh, but the main... I guess thing was 
There are M.2 SATAs versus NVMEs, and they're, like, a lot cheaper. So, but now the prices on these NVMEs are coming down, so that's why I finally bought one, because I'm like, well, this is the price of the same equivalent SSD on a SATA, a, a 2.5 inch. So, every 512 gigabyte SSD that I bought has been about $29. Um, between $26 and $29. I have never found one for less. This was $26. I'm like, well, I'll try it. I mean, what do I got to lose, right? So anyway, um, until all the updates are done and all this, I won't really be able to uh, judge the performance of the device. The fact that it's like the piece of a, uh, it's smaller than a, it's like smaller than an SD, I mean a, an SD, a USB stick, it really is, I mean, it's like a stick of gum, I mean, the thing was, was inside that, and this is one of the larger ones, <laughs> they have smaller ones than that, they have ones that, that are like this, also I think there's also an M.2, format for um, uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi also. I'm pretty sure I've seen that before. Um, but see, I've got some computers that I can't really expand. Like some of those Dell computers. As far as like being able to put more than one uh, hard drive in it. So this is, this opens up the whole new thing because the, um, the Dell 7050 that I have running my ham radio stuff has this on the motherboard so since the Dell doesn't have um, a power supply that can be used to power more SATA devices um, it, it makes it to where like okay well I can just boot this uh, this Dell off of one of these at 512 and then have a, another large you know drive for just storage and um, so as you see I named the computer NVMe <laughs> so there you go